Good morning, afternoon, or evening, you can heal family. I'm Sheena, and we've been reading the Bible together. If this is your first time finding the scriptures with me, thank you. I'm glad you're here. So we are on chapter 24, and we're just going to continue um, where we picked up yesterday, because it kind of, even though it's a new chapter, it's still talking about the laws for harmony in the nation. So here we go. Suppose a man marries a woman, but later discovers something about her that is shameful. So he writes her a letter of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her away. If she then leaves and marries another man, and the second husband also divorces her or dies, the former husband may not marry her again, for she has been defiled. That would be detestable to the Lord. You must not bring guilt upon the land the Lord your God is giving you as a special occasion. A newly married man must not be drafted into the army or given any other special responsibilities. He must be free to be at home for one year, bringing happiness to the wife he has married. Well, all right, look at that. And stay home a whole year and bring happiness. <laughs> interesting verse 6 says it is wrong to take a pair of millstones or even just the upper millstone as a pledge for the owner uses it to make a living if anyone kidnaps a fellow Israelite and treats him as a slave or sells him the kidnapper must die he must cleanse the evil from among you verse 8 watch all contagious skin diseases carefully and follow the instructions of the Levitical priests. Obey the commands I have given them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam as you were coming from Egypt. If you lend anything to your neighbor, do not enter your neighbor's house to claim the security. Stand outside and the owner will bring it out to you. If your neighbor is poor and has only a cloak to give as security, do not keep the cloak overnight. Return the cloak to its owner by sunset so your neighbor can sleep in it and bless you. And the Lord your God will count it as a righteous act. Never take advantage of poor laborers, whether fellow Israelites or foreigners living in your towns. Pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they might cry out to the Lord against you and it would be counted against you as sin. Parents must not put to death for the sins of their children, nor the children for the sins of their parents. Those worthy of death must be executed for their own crimes. And verse 16 says, must not be put to death. Just to clear that up, I read that word wrong. Verse 17 says, True justice must be given to foreigners living among you and orphans, and you must never accept a widow's garment and pledge of her debt. Always remember that. Oh, look at that. Always remember is <laughs> beginning of verse 18. That's interesting. It says here, though, always remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I have given you this command. Redeemed is such a nice word, you know. We've been redeemed. We've been bought the price. And we are all gods. He just, he's, we belong to him. Ah, oh, that's so good. That's so good. When you are harvesting your crops and forget to bring in a bundle of grain from your field, don't go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all you do. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. When you beat the beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the boughs twice. Leave some of the olives for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. This also applies to the grapes in your vineyard. Do not glean the vines after they are picked, but leave any remaining grapes for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Remember that you are slaves in the land of Egypt. That is why I am giving you this command. And that's one of the things that's most exciting to me about wanting to live a debt-free life is, you know, you'll have, you'll have more to give, right? You got to spend money, save money, or give money. And 
when you don't have any debts, you can be more generous and, you know, have things left over to share with others and to demonstrate God's love. So that's a good thing. I'm going to go on and read chapter 25 as well. It says, suppose two people take a dispute to court and the judge declare that one is right and the other is wrong. If the person in the wrong is sentenced to be flogged, the judge will command him to lie down and be beaten in his presence with the number of lashes appropriate to the crime. No more than 40 lashes may ever be given. More than 40 lashes would publicly humiliate your neighbor. Do not keep an ox from eating as it treads out the grain. If two brothers are living together on the same property and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside the family. Instead, her husband's brother must marry her and fulfill the duties of a brother-in-law. The first son she bears to him will be counted as the son of the dead brother so that his name will not be forgotten in Israel. But if the dead man's brother refuses to marry the widow, she must go to the town gate and say to the leaders there, my husband's brother refuses to preserve his brother's name in Israel. He refuses to marry me. The leaders of the town will then summon him and try to reason with him. If he still insists that he doesn't want to marry her, the widow must walk over to him in the presence of the leaders, pull his sandal from his foot and spit in his face? <laughs> what? She will then say, this is what happens to a man who refuses to raise up a son for his brother. Ever afterward, his family will be referred to as the family of the man whose sandal was pulled off. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, there you have it. That's interesting. Verse 11 says, if two Israelite men are fighting and the wife of one tries to rescue her husband by grabbing the testicles of the other man, her hand must be cut off without pity. Now, my goodness. <laughs> That's taking a cat fight to another level. Oh, my goodness. Verse 13. You must use accurate scales when you weigh out merchandise, and you must use full and honest measures so that you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God has given you. Those who cheat with dishonest weights and measures are detestable to the Lord your God. Yeah, don't try to scam and cheat and get over you can heal family. We don't want to do that. It's not living a life of integrity. Verse 17 says, Never forget what the Amalekites did to you as you came from Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary, and they struck down those who were lagging behind. They had no fear of God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemies in the land he is giving you as a special possession, you are to destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. Never forget this. And that concludes chapter 25. Some shocking verses here. And I, I don't know, I guess reading out loud, you, you hear it all so clear, all these things that, you know, sometimes when you read in your head, you would just gloss over. But that's interesting. Interesting as interesting you can heal family. So I don't know, let's see, what's my takeaway? What's sticking out in my head here? Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> if you ever read something and then you're like, what did I just read? What? <laughs> oh, gosh. I guess the lady, um, the man didn't want her. The brother did not want her. And she spit in his face and pulled off the sandal. So if you get to that point, ladies, where you're pulling off men's shoes because they don't want you, to, please, please stop. You know, you should want to be chosen. Don't ever beg for a man to want you. Don't ever, you know, take the scraps, just whatever you can get, no. No, 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 Chrissy said on her video, we're not settling anymore, and that's right. We're not settling, okay? We're gonna be ladylike. <laughs>
Okay, I got the giggles. Let me go. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. We'll talk to you later. Bye.